Brandon Zurweller uh, from the University of Florida with a title Coordinated Adaptive Phenotyping for Improving Soil Water Acquisition and Utilization. Brandon, it's all yours. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for everyone for attending my seminar today. Um, so my talk today is entitled Coordinated Adaptive Phenotyping for Improving Soil Water Acquisition and Utilization. And so just to give you a little summary of, of what I'm going to be talking about today is some of the approaches that um, we're using to select peanut germplasm adaptability and specific, specifically hydrologic adaptability to um, say well watered, low drought risk uh, production systems and higher drought risk uh, production systems. And so I just want to give a little overview on the U.S. peanut production um, regions, and they can be generally classified into two regions, the southwestern and the southeastern United States. And um, climatically and environmentally, um, they have uh, very different conditions in the southeast. Um, we have the, the peanut belt here. Um, it's a humid environment um, where you can get uh, lots of uh, total precipitation in year and high intensity, where the southwest um, is more arid, uh, and you have lower precipitation totals as well as lower precipitation intensity. They both rel have relatively lower water holding capacity soils, particularly in the southeast environment where you can have deep sand. So although you can receive high amounts of rainfall, you can get rapid soil water depletion and a fast onset of, of drought conditions and also um, differences in vapor pressure deficit as well. And one kind of critical management aspect that really affects um, the hydrologic conditions is um, irrigated acreage. So in the southwest, um, the higher drought risk environment, there's about 95% of irrigated acreage. And in the southeast, uh, about 60%. Um, percent. And so really what we wanted to start was really look at um, disparate genotypes to get a sense of um, what are inherent trait differences, particularly in below ground traits, and um, how does that contribute to water use? And so there's, there's two subspecies of peanut. There's uh, subspecies Fastigiata and subspecies Hypergia, which are characterized four different U.S. market types. So Valencia and Spanish um, are in subspecies Fastigiata, and runners and Virginias are in subspecies Hypergia. And you can see, uh, based on these pictures, the above ground traits are, um, their phenotypes are fairly different. Um, the Valencia's type have more of a, a racked canopy architecture, where the runners are, are more prostrate and, and grow lower to the ground. And you can also see differences in uh, seed characteristics, seed size, number of seeds uh, per pot. So uh, one question we were really interested in that really hadn't been looked at is, is there, do we see these inherent trait differences uh, in root architecture, and what does this mean for water use, and does it contribute to, say, more or less uh, drought tolerance? And so we started by just doing a general yield screen of multiple genotypes, um, and we had several years of data with several irrigation treatments, and we we're looking at um, just the um, regression analysis of unit of yield per millimeter of water received, and that's what this graph is showing. And we kind of had three main clusters here. Um, one above this uh, line, which was a, a positive regression coefficient of yield response to water. So these would be lines that were uh, more specifically adapted to environments which receive a large amount of rainfall. And then kind of this middle group, which was neutral, which lines that weren't really responsive at all to, to the amount of total water received, so more broadly adapted and then lines that um, were negatively adapted or had um, negative yield declines to increase amounts of water. And so really what this suggests is that um, these different lines uh, perhaps have different water use strategies. And one interesting um, thing about this is these lines up here, which were positive responders, were ones of fastigiata descent, and then the more neutral and negative were one of, of hypogea descent. And so we set up a two-year study where we had four different irrigation rates. We had a well-watered uh, treatment where we put 1.9 centimeters per application, um, a 60% prime acclimation treatment where we had a reduced amount of water, a 
applied uh, during the first 50, 50 days after planting, and then uh, 1.9 centimeters for the remainder of the season. And then uh, a deficit irrigation where we had 1.1 centimeters the entire season and a rain fed control. And these treatments were applied across uh, four different genotypes. So two of the Fistigiata descent, uh, COC041 in New Mexico Valencia C, which those were lines that res responded positively to additional amounts of water applied in the previous graph, graph that I showed. And then uh, two commercial cultivars of Hypogea descent, uh, one that was a negative responder to water and, uh, and then an additional one, Tough Runner 511. And so we use the mini rhizotron system to quantify the root growth among these four different lines. And what you see here on the y-axis is the total root length development over the growing season. And you can see we had differences among the four different genotypes. And particularly the top two, <coughs> COC041 and Mexico Montia C, were ones of fastigiata descent. And you see a clear delineation uh, among those in comparison to the hypogea ones. Um, so there does seem to be um, this inherent um, diversity among these genotypes in the overall um, carbon part partition below ground. So this is the sum of roots um, to 80 centimeters. So overall more biomass partition below ground. And so since we were really interested in um, assessing water use and particularly uh, drought tolerance, we're also interested in how these roots are distributed uh, in the soil. So this, this is a similar, similar graph where we're looking at total root length, but this is looking at deeper depths at 40 to 60 centimeters and 60 to 80 centimeters. And we saw kind of the similar trend where the fastigiata descent um, genotypes uh, that partitioned more carbon below ground um, had more roots deeper. And so this is kind of a depiction then of a, a Valencia or Fastigiata root architecture where they have more of a fibrous root system and um, lots of roots deeper into the soil profile. <coughs> and then this would be a depiction of the runners where they have similar amounts uh, in the surface horizons and then, but less um, roots uh, deeper into the soil profile. So, you know, based on this, um, you could possibly make the assumption that while well, the Valencias have more roots deeper in the soil profile, they can acquire more water and therefore may be more drought tolerant. However, when we talk about drought tolerance from a yield maintenance perspective, um, that's not what we saw. So this is showing um, the yield results across both years and uh, we have the four irrigation treatments there, the 100% and then as you move right we have a decreased amount of irrigation and then the rain fed control where we had a significant yield decline indicating that there was some level of drought stress um, across these lines. But that yield decline was the same across all of those four genotypes, indicating that just because there was more roots deeper in the soil profile, particularly in the fastigiata descent ones, it didn't result in additional amount of root water uptake and overall less yield declines um, with reduced amounts of water. And so the last few slides I want to talk about is just a method that we use to really try to link what's this relationship between root system architecture and crop water depletion. So um, this picture on your right is um, a Trium TDR probe that can quantify the volumetric soil water content of uh, the soil around the mini rhizotron tube. And so we use this to measure soil water content pre-dawn um, and pre-dusk and just looked at the difference uh, over the course of the day in 10 centimeter um, segments. And so then we had an estimation of crop water depletion uh, in the same zones that we had uh, total root length quantified. And so since this was a new method, we wanted to uh, validate it and make sure that, um, you know, is this reflective of uh, soil water uptake? And so on the y-axis is the transpiration flux. Um, and as, as we expected, we saw um, a positive relationship between as, as transpiration fluxes increased, um, so did the total amount of soil water depletion, uh, indicating that uh, this method is valid for making compar relative comparisons among genotypes. 
So now I'm going to show a series of graphs then um, that's showing the soil water content for a particular day and then the root water uptake and particularly where it's occurring in the soil um, on those days. So this is a day where it was wet out where the, the blue bars represent high volumetric soil water content and, and red would be low. And on a wet day, you can see that most of the soil water uptake occurred in the top 30 centimeters of soil, where very little occurred below 30 centimeters. And then on a dry day, um, the pattern of soil water uptake shifted where we saw less soil water uptake on the surface and, and more deeper in the soil profile. And then on a very dry day, we measured it and basically had no soil water uptake. And these patterns occur um, similarly across uh, our fastigiata and our hypogea uh, genotypes, um, just kind of further validating that um, just because you have differences in inher inherent architecture doesn't mean that um, you're going to have more um, root water uptake deeper in the soil profile. It's, it's more about um, the environmental conditions or the, the volumetric soil water content that's controlling where the soil water uptake is occurring uh, in, the, in the soil. And so from a, a specific hydrologic adaptability perspective, this is really important because if you were, say, in the southeast irrigated environment, we can have a lot of rainfall and low drought risk, what would be the benefits of having deep roots if most of the water uptake uh, over the seasons occurring in the top 30 centimeters of soil? Um, and you could make the case vice versa where it'd be more important to have deeper roots um, and a higher drought risk. Um, I guess the question is just um, what's enough roots deeper into the soil profile to extract water um, without having uh, an abundance of roots that may not be necessary. And so that's kind of the below ground assessment. But one other critical component an above ground trait and really looking at the coordination of these traits and assessing hydro hydrologic adaptability um, and root water uptake is the, the transpiration fluxes. Because I mean, this is the, tr the major driving force which is pulling water out of the soil and into the root. And so we measured across our, our two lines, our Tough Runner and, and COC041. Um, and what we noticed is that the the, the solid dots, the COC041, which is a vestigiata descent, um, at times had lower transpiration fluxes. And when you look on those particular days at the soil water content, we noticed that uh, on that first day around 70 days after planting, um, it was a lower amount of soil water content. And then after a wetting event, um, they had similar amounts of gas exchange. And then again on a drying event, um, it decreased and, and so on. You can see the trend there. And, uh, would just suggest that there's also um, genetic variability and uh, still model closure uh, to soil drying, which then is often is often too critical then um, for pairing this trait to um, with the below ground traits as well. And so just to kind of sum up then this concept of coordinated adaptive phenotyping is. Um, we had kind of our, our, our runner traits, uh, which had late still model closure to soil drying and uh, predominant proportion of its roots in the surface. And, and this is what we hypothesized would be um, the best adapted phenotype for a low drought risk scenario. And then this was our Valencia um, suite of traits where we had early still model closure um, as well as deep roots, although it didn't seem to contribute to um, drought tolerance. So um, although it, it may be well set up to survive drought um, from an ecological standpoint, uh, this trait is probably not going to be beneficial to um, have yield maintenance because of that um, still model sensitivity to soil drying. So um, this is what we're really trying to do more screenings and see if we can identify um, something that is late still model closure to soil drying, but then it's also paired with deep roots to acquire that um, so you don't have lethal dehydration um, from maintaining transpiration but not having access to water. And so with that, I'd just like to thank the funders of this research, the National Peanut Board, USDA, NEFA, 
and the Florida peanut producers uh, in the Center for Stress Resilient Agriculture. And with that, I'll take any questions that everyone has. Thank you very much, Brandon. So are there questions regarding this talk?